Well, we've just learned that the United Kingdom is about to start experiments in solar radiation management. And this gives rise to some concerns. And the first one is consent. I didn't give consent for this. And I suspect you didn't give consent for this. And if you're living in the United States or Canada or Australia, you certainly didn't give consent for this. And I haven't been informed. So we don't have the informed consent that we would like. Now, the thing about this so-called solar radiation management is it dims the amount of sunlight that gets to the Earth. It's reducing the amount of incident solar radiation. And of course, all our food depends on incident solar radiation from the sun. So here we have the potential to reduce the amount of food that's produced to control agriculture. The obvious question is, who will be in control? No one's approached me to take control. Has anyone approached you to take control? What great elites, what betters, what, what senior intellects will be in control of this, allowing the amount of sunlight that us plebs on the earth get? We will produce less vitamin D, of course, as well. But we can take tablets for that. But the main thing is the food. If you can control food production, make no mistake, you control everything. If someone's hungry, they'll do anything for food. So we don't want elites controlling our amount of sunlight and therefore the amount of food that we have. And sunlight's necessary for all food chains, plants and the animals and, and absolutely everything. And of course, it's necessary for photosynthesis. Now, am I, am I getting something wrong here? So we're going to reduce the amount of sunlight that comes to the earth. That reduces the amount of photosynthesis. Now, what photosynthesis is, it takes water and carbon dioxide... It takes energy from the sun, it combines that into sugars, and it also gives us oxygen. So uh, I used to teach my students the equation, six molecules of H2O plus six molecules of carbon dioxide, plus the energy from the sun gives C6H12O6, which is a simple sugar molecule, plus six molecules of oxygen. Now, I, I thought we were being told that there was too much carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, but photosynthesis is that which takes carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. So am I missing something here? And I also kind of like to breathe oxygen occasionally as well, because that's produced by photosynthesis. So why would we want to be reducing photosynthesis? Less photosynthesis, more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, the antithesis of what we're told we want. And, and yet we're going to be reducing the amount of solar radiation coming to the surface of the of the earth. Now at the moment this is a 50 million pound project. It doesn't sound too small to me and it's probably being done already but this is an official 50 million pound project that they're being forced to admit to at the moment. What are the risks here? Well changes in the weather. The world, Asia, Africa depends on the monsoon. It has to be the seasonal monsoon to produce the world's food supply. The risk of that being disrupted is, is immense. We could be talking about famine on a, on a Herculean massive scale here, a biblical scale. And then there can be local effects. Maybe one area is going to be affected and another, another area is not going to be affected. And th that can give rise to regional tensions. W one group raiding another area for food. Um, it, it's, there's all sorts of nasty implications potentially here. If there's regional effects in the way that the radiation from the sun gets to the earth and generates agriculture and we're kind of treating the symptoms here really rather than treating the underlying problems we need to consider the way that we interact with our natural environment the ecosystem is an amazing place we've got plants and animals of course wonderful but we've also got in the background you can see from me now there's there's 10 to the 22 types of virus not not, not viruses 10 to the 22 types bacteria fungi it's all in an integrated web uh, with complexity beyond our imagination. And I was a chartered biologist for a while. I have studied this. And it's, it's just beyond our imagination to know how this complicated system works, but it does. And human interference could be really a bad idea. So it's not really what we want. So they're the problems, some of the risks. Uh, let's proceed with great caution on this one, shall we? Please, United Kingdom government... And if you're in a government from another part, of, if you're in a jurisdiction in another part of the world, um, I think you can probably share our concerns. 
I'm going to give you more details on this uh, shortly, but that's just a quick uh, overview. And of course, if we wanted to get rid of carbon, we could plant some more of these. These amazing created structures, these trees. Why don't we plant more of those if we we're so worried about carbon dioxide? But for now, um, elites don't interfere with our ecosystem. I don't give informed consent and uh, don't mess with things you don't understand because no matter how clever you are, I don't really believe you do understand ecosystems. They are very complicated, delicate and must be respected.